what needs to be established over these last few games before the playoffs hit? Yeah, I mean, it's like, um, I, I think it's a constant goal or constant search for consistency. I think it's for all 30 teams. I mean, no one plays great basketball for 48 minutes. It's just, doesn't happen. Uh, for us lately, obviously, um, in the first half of a game in Washington, you can't have that. A fourth quarter against Philly, you can't have that. But, but it's something to strive for. You know, you, you have the constant search for greatness. And, uh, you know, that's our mission. We have seven games to to try to find that. And hopefully throughout the playoffs, you know, you're still searching for that and, and, and finding ways to be um, great for 48 minutes. Um, I think our players are in a good place mentally. And uh, I think now with seven to go, also making sure that we're in a good place physically as we you know, start thinking about the postseason. But um, yeah, we got to be better. We got to be more consistent. I think we all know that. And uh, we share in the efforts to make sure we're better. What all goes into being in a good place mentally? Oh, positive, you know, not, you know, like uh, I think for a lot of people, um, not within this room with our team, but a lot of people, you know, when you lose four in a row, you know, it was, you know, the, the sky was falling. And, you know, like I'm sure some people thought we should cancel the season at that point. Um, but that's not how it works. You have to handle adversity and you have to handle that. And every team goes through it. I don't care what part of the season, but every team goes through it. Um, and so during that stretch, Adam, it's like, okay, how can we be honest with each other, address the shortcomings, be accountable, but also stay together and stay positive and understand where we are. Uh, and that's one thing I think for me as a head coach, just constantly finding ways to challenge our guys, but also you know, appreciate where we are and what we have done and more importantly, where we're going. Uh, so just like we had a really cool event last night, the gala, uh, all the players were there. Uh, I think the guys had a good time with that. Um, and, and today's practice is trying to keep it short, upbeat, good energy. You know, when you walk in, you don't want energy vampires, man. You don't want somebody to suck the life out of a room. Everybody brings something to the table. It starts with our coaching staff as well as the players, and uh, that's where we are. Michael, when, when you're grinding through an 82-game season, constantly pursuing wins, trying to get up the ladder, where's the joy in coaching? Where, where do you derive the joy during the season? Wow. Um, that's a great question. The joy is celebrating the moments. You know, and, and sometimes you know you can only celebrate that moment for a short period of time before you turn the page and get ready for the next challenge. Um, but when you uh, you know you've had the season that we've had, 51 wins. You know, obviously we always would like to be better, but uh, the home record that we have in front of great home fans and uh, in Ball Arena, uh, the the return of a Jamal Murray, the return of a Michael Porter Jr. Uh, Nicola's just consistent greatness year in and year out, game in and game out. Um, you know, so I, I, I think for me the joy is celebrating the moments, whether it's an individual having a big night, the team having a big night. Uh, but you have to do that because if not, I don't know why you, you're in this business if you don't find time to do that. On a Nicola, he's near the top of the league in deflections, a lot, lot of steals. How impressed are you just by his hands and just his, his kind of reaction speed? Aaron was just talking about like his dexterity and just how he can get to you know so many loose balls and generate steals. Well, you know, as much as made, um, you know, hatchet jobs are made about Nicola's defense. You know, and um, I don't know who's paying some of these people to write these articles. You know, they're, they're just so one-sided. Um, but if you really look at the game, you know, is Nicola going to be a shot blocker? Is he going to protect the rim at the level of a Dikembe Mutombo? Probably not. But to your point, Harrison, he's great in terms of contesting shots. And when he's guarding a pick and roll and his ability to, when I think deflections for years, I, I always just always assumed that deflections with your hand. And Nicola's deflections with his hands and his feet are what are amazing to me. His hand, eye, his hand eye, foot, whatever you want to call it, coordination is just remarkable, and he breaks up so many plays with that. Um, and there was one clip where like, he looked like a hockey goalie. He had his hands up, his left hand up, and his right foot out, breaking up a play. 
And so that speaks to his athleticism, his coordination, his anticipation, and why I think he's a much better defender than he gets credit for. Michael, the, the combination of Jamal and Nicola, the, the numbers they've put together in the past have been historic and prolific. But now that he's, Jamal's coming back into the playoffs for the first time with, with Nicola as a two-time MVP, does that change the dynamic at all of, of how they play in the playoffs? Because, you know, Jamal's been the finisher in the past at times. How does J Nicola being a two-time MVP kind of impact that dynamic at all, if at all? Yeah, I would say um, each game will take on its own life and personality. Uh, we know that Nicola is potentially a three-time MVP winner. But I also know that to win and to win big, it can't be just on one player. You need everybody to step up. And you know, to have Jamal back after two postseasons that he's missed, that just gives us more firepower. And as you mentioned, Om, that, that two-man game that they have and their chemistry and their ability to play off of each other and make each other better is remarkable. And I'd be foolish if I didn't look to exploit that because when the game is on the line, Nicola draws so much attention. And you know, and Jamal is a great, you know, uh, partner within that. So, um, yeah, we, we understand that you know Nicole is our main guy, but you know Jamal, Jamal has shown that we made the Western Conference Finals with Jamal playing at a high level, and we're going to need him to be a huge part of what we do here in this postseason. Do you think people have kind of forgotten about how good Jamal is in the playoffs? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Please forget. You know, uh, underestimate Jamal. Don't guard him, and uh, I'd love to see that. But knowing coaches in this league, I think they all understand what Jamal is capable of. Um, you know, we talk about Jamal in the regular season, and I think we all understand there's also a playoff Jamal and how he's taken. I mean, the guy had two 50-point games in the series against Utah. He was a huge factor in coming back from two 3-1 deficits. That wasn't just Nikola Jokic. I mean, Jamal was outstanding in that bubble. And uh, just having him back this postseason, both he and Michael, you know, we feel like we have a, a real chance because we're healthy. Not done with. Michael, how much of those uh, hatchet jobs wind up on your desk? People, you know, like, uh, it's funny. I love my family, but they read too much shit. You know, I'm like, stop, Ma. Like, my mother, like, Ma, stop sending me stuff. For real? I don't, uh, I mean, I got a, my, one of my sisters that sent me stuff. Like, and the coaches, sometimes they'll, they'll show me something or like whatever. And I just read it and, you know, I understand like we're all open for criticism. That's the nature of this business. And we're not perfect. I'm not perfect. Our players aren't perfect. So there are going to be games and nights where we don't do our jobs to the best of our abilities. So I'm not saying that we should never be criticized. But I think sometimes there are people out there that are just going really out of their way to prove a point. And, you know, I just, I wonder what, what, what is the motivation? You know, what are they trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. So they're killing this guy, but they're really trying to promote somebody else. Well, just do that. Promote your guy. I mean, so I just, all the, what's the word? Subterfuge? Is that a word? Yeah, that's a word. Sure is. Right? Does it apply here? <laughs> yep. It applies. I think it applies here. <laughs> I'm tired of the subterfuge. subterfuge. Yeah. Can you spell it? SUB Fuge. Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Aaron seems pretty One understanding more. about not getting back into the game in the fourth quarter yeah. there. Um, just how valuable is that kind of disposition to have in the locker room, a guy who doesn't overreact and is kind of able to see the long game? Yeah, I mean, it speaks to Aaron Gordon being mature, and it speaks to him really being a selfless player. And I've used that word with Aaron all season long, how selfless he has been. And the game ended, and before, like, I waved to Doc, I went right over to him because, um, and I said, hey, Aaron, I apologize, that's on me. And that's why, I, like, when Mike asked the question, I wanted to make sure, like, there was no, Malone's going with Green over Gordon. Subterfuge. Yeah, there's none of that. It was, when you're up 20 with 7.50 to go, and I'm thinking we have a chance to maybe rest some guys, I did not expect that 20-point lead to be cut to three. And at that point, with four, under four minutes to go, and Aaron's been sitting on the bench that long, I also didn't want to put him out there in a position to maybe fail. And that's a long time to sit. So to answer your question, Vinny, yeah, I think it speaks to Aaron's maturity, him being selfless. And as he told me, he goes, Coach, I, as long as we get the win, that's all I care about. Reggie Jackson, a guy that we got at the buyout market, 
guy's been amazing to me. Like he, he played, he played, he played. I've gone in another direction. And Reggie comes in every day with a smile on his face. Hey, I just want to win. I want to be a part of a team that wins, and it's not about me. So to have veterans like that means the world to me. DeAndre's been the same thing, ish. And I, I think it maybe really sets a great example for some of our younger players who may not always understand that. Thank you, so much. Appreciate you. Hey.